Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Thursday, February 13th, 2014. I'm the gentleman physicist, filling in for Jack this week. We begin with a story from the world of medicine. Researchers from the Gladstone Institute are developing a potential cure for type 1 diabetes. Just as a refresher, type 1 diabetes is when the immune system attacks and destroys the cells in the pancreas that produce insulin. Currently, treating it requires frequent monitoring of blood glucose levels and insulin injections. While this prevents the disease from being a death sentence, it must be maintained essentially throughout a person's entire life. The essential cells in question are known as beta cells, and we've talked about them in the show before. They don't transplant easily, so most research is going into ways to generate new cells. To that end, these researchers tried a slightly different method for producing beta cells from stem cells. In an animal model, they started with normal skin cells and then converted them into endoderm-like cells using a combination of growth factors. Next was the key step, converting those cells into pancreatic cells. But not beta cells directly. Mature beta cells can't divide and replenish themselves. So instead, they attempted to transplant the precursor cells that are found in the pancreas while it's developing. In mice, genetically engineered to have diabetes, these transplant cells formed a healthy population of insulin-secreting beta cells and returned blood glucose levels to normal. While this is very encouraging, the next step is the long road to a hopeful human application. Next is a quick update from the world of chemistry, and just kinda cool. A group from the University of Illinois has developed a self-healing polymer, but with a few unique properties. We've discussed self-healing materials before, usually some engineered form of plastic that may require an input of energy to work. This group, however, set out to create a material that healed at room temperature and used commercially available precursors. It's a modified form of polyurea, which is a common and broad class of plastics and similar materials. They said that using a relatively simple process, they were able to modify how the bonds in the polymer were laid out allowing it to heal itself. So far, they've made a soft, flexible plastic as a proof of concept. It appears to reform almost completely as attempts to break it happen at new points along the material, and not where they were previously healed. Now that the process is out there, they believe many other groups and companies can start to produce similar materials at any scale, for a wide range of products that can self-repair damage without a catalyst or other energy source. Our final story is from the world of medicine, because sometimes these are just too good to pass up. An international team of researchers is using new tools to investigate why certain cancers tend to spread to specific areas of the body. For example, if breast cancer metastasizes, it tends to spread to specific organs, including bone. Although all cancer is life-threatening, bone metastasis can come up with a whole other set of additional complications, including fracturing. So it is this dynamic the team chose to investigate first. To do this, they used a model we've talked about on the show before, microfluidic devices that are commonly referred to as an organ on a chip. Normally, they are tiny channels lined with blood vessel cells and some other forms of tissue to help model an organ on a small scale. Since human cells can be used, they are being heavily investigated for their use in basic research and drug testing. This time, the researchers had blood vessel cells alongside bone cells and actually allowed a highly aggressive line of breast cancer cells to flow through the device. The cancer cells quickly made it through the artificial blood vessel wall and began seeding tumors within the isolated bone tissue. By observing this microfluidic device, they were able to identify some of the mechanisms used by the cancer to get into the bone, and a protein that the bone cells secrete that likely encourages the cancer. By blocking this protein in another experiment, They showed that the cancer did not invade as aggressively. They hope this discovery will lead to potential drugs that can prevent metastasis and think this model could work for similar research into cancer. We hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our second story, what everyday products would you want to have a self-healing polymer in? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.